This laptop cost $35, including shipping from eBay. Was it worth the price? Can you game on it? Let's take a look at this HP EliteBook 2170P and find out. Opening up the box, we have a surprisingly compact 11.6 inch notebook. The first thing that strikes me is all this sticky stuff on top of the display. We'll try our luck cleaning that in just a second. The rest of the laptop looks alright. With a bit of light cleaning, it should come up pretty good. The only major cosmetic flaw is the deteriorating rubber spacer around the display. On closer inspection, it looks like it was picked off intentionally. That's the gamble you pay when you buy an X school laptop. Another thing to note is that this did not come with a charger. Luckily most HP laptops use the same big round power plug and I had 3 or 4 compatible chargers literally just lying around. Now, that lid needs some desperate attention. The substance doesn't seem to want to wipe off. Stepping things up a notch, I tried using a barbecue scraper and some fairly strong cleaning chemicals. This proved to be somewhat effective and layers of the gooey substance started to come off. I also tried using a toothbrush and toothpaste to remove more of the gunk. Finally, after many rounds of cleaning, I had the lid looking far cleaner and way less sticky. So, time to boot the machine up. Straight away, I noticed a purple horizontal line running the entire length of the display. This was not how the laptop was advertised on the eBay listing. The seller actually offered to refund me half of the purchase price, so it ended up costing $35 instead of $70. So, with that out of the way, let's install some programs. To my surprise, this thing was slow. Really damn slow. It had a fresh legitimate copy of Windows 10 Home installed, and also features a very capable Intel Core i3-3217U processor. Adding more RAM could definitely make this laptop a lot more usable. So, I did just that. Knowing this laptop takes DDR3 and likely has a vacant RAM slot, I removed the cover on the base of the laptop. Made sure to remove the battery, I then added another stick of RAM I had lying around, bringing the total up to 6GB. I was also surprised how clean and dust free the laptop was inside. When I powered it back up, it functioned without any issues. In fact, it was quite a lot faster. Looking at the task manager, I can see that the laptop idles using close to 2GB of RAM. While this laptop is definitely small, it has a decent selection of ports, including two USB 3.0, full size display port, a smart card slot, a 3.5mm audio jack, VGA, RJ45 Ethernet connector, as well as an SD card reader. The Angular design is very much of its time, but the excellent build quality is probably the only reason it survived being in a school. When it comes to gaming performance, this cheap little laptop actually surprised me. Running the games off an SSD definitely helped, and in BeamNG Drive, at the native resolution on lowest settings, I was getting a very playable 30ish frames per second. The next title, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, is far more demanding. Dropping into the game, I was only getting around 7 frames per second. But, like the persistent person I am, I did not let that horrendous frame rate get in my way. After some time, it settled at a slightly higher 9 frames per second. Somehow I actually came across a care package, and once kitted up in my ghillie suit, I was ready to take on the world. And then I died. Next on our list is Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Running this at 720p lowest settings yielded a playable, but definitely not competitive frame rate hanging around 45. HD YouTube playback was fine, but the display on the laptop isn't very bright. As far as productivity is concerned, the keyboard has a very nice tactile feel. Just the right amount of travel in my opinion. The trackpad on the other hand is not great. There's definitely a reason I used a mouse while gaming let's just say. Last of all, the battery life is going to always be a real gamble when it comes to X business and school laptops. The one in this laptop comfortably gets over 2 hours of use, which in 2019 really isn't that great. So would I recommend one of these little notebooks? Without a RAM and possibly an SSD upgrade, I would have to say no. 2GB of RAM just isn't enough, at least if you're running Windows 10. If you were to find a similar laptop to this with more than 4GB of RAM and you threw in an SSD, you'd actually have quite a capable little machine on your hands. Once again, thank you very much for watching. If you've liked what you've seen, feel free to leave a like and if you want to see more, definitely consider subscribing. I'll see you in the next video.